and welcome into the Roadwire Esports Show. My name is Andrew Laird, joined as always by Ethan Sexton. This time to talk about Friday's four-game LPL LCK slate. Ethan, we I started off yesterday's video by patting ourselves, patting us on the back for our excellent calls. Didn't work out quite as well today. Um, I didn't realize like how DRX heavy I was until I saw my winnings that were close to zero. Uh, and it was my one non-DRX lineup that at least kept me from the cliff today. Um, and I don't want to say, I don't want to put it as bluntly as it's going to be, but I believe I was trying to play uh, T1 and whoever the other, uh, and KT. And I asked you to walk me out of it. So I'm not going to actually blame you for that. I'll blame myself for that. But man, it's uh, that's a bummer. <laughs> You, you can blame me if you want, but what won't make me feel bad about it is if you ended up playing T1 today, would you have played the right T1 players anyway? No, definitely so, not. So, so that's what I mean. So I'm not <laughs> going to feel too bad about it then, all right? Because, you know, obviously they screwed with their lineup again, and uh, Teddy comes in for the first time, Cuz comes in for the first time, and, you know, if you weren't, you probably wouldn't have had them anyway. So I don't, you know... I, no offense, but I just don't feel that bad about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That, I mean, that's totally fair. T- I mean, uh, and they were like the late game. It's not like I could have like stayed up and, and saw that coming. Um, right. So, yeah, I mean, the, the tournaments that I played, you know, Cuz was 40.4% uh, owned and Teddy was 0.8% owned. Yeah. Um, so nobody really had them. And T1 is just going to be a headache all year, unfortunately. Um, at least if they play in that 3 a.m. time slot going forward, people can wake up and scour Twitter for their lineup. But anytime they're in the – I mean, they're mostly in the 6 o'clock time slot, though, because that's like prime time in Korea, I think, right. and they're one of the most popular teams. So, yeah, they're going to be – they're going to be a pain the entire year, unfortunately. I felt bad because uh, one of our subscribers in Discord was like, wait a minute, am I like crazy to think that uh, Gumayushi was starting? And I was like, he had been. And like, I didn't, I hadn't actually looked at the box score yet, so I didn't even know Teddy was starting. So right. I like went into it then and I was like, oh, and he sent his lineup, T1 KT stack, Guma oh. captain. And it's like, if that's a Teddy captain, you crush. But it was like, if you look at uh, Guma was like 18%. And I'm like, obviously, you know, like you didn't mess up there. It's just mo- everybody just assumed that, that Teddy oh. wasn't playing. So like, it's I just mean, such a tough pill to swallow. Yeah, I mean, the people who played Teddy and Cuz just got lucky, in my opinion. Unless they had some inside info that the rest of us didn't. Like, I don't know why anyone would have assumed that they were going to start when they hadn't played at all all year. But it is whatever. <clears throat> I saw, uh, I was talking to somebody earlier who it said that he saw some Teddy lineups of players that he like knows are good. And he's like, I think they were on purpose. And he's like, but we, he, he and I haven't looked in like if they had identical lineups, just one with Teddy and one with uh, Guma UC or, or what. But um, Right, to cover their bases. Right. Yeah. But needless to say, I wasn't remotely close to that. So uh it's like I want to I want to take credit for the T1 KT thought, and then I'm just reminded of why I don't like to play LCK teams. Like, I know, yeah. Perfect example. Anyway, yep. We've got um, <clears throat> another four games on Friday. Um, we've got the biggest favorite is an LCK team, but at least one that's a little more reliable. Uh, Damwon biggest favorite against Hanwha Life, which should be good. I mean, we've said we've said some good things about Hanwha life on this pod on this video without actually playing them. Uh, so, uh, but we know they're good, but Damwon obviously, uh, kind of on another level. Uh, then we have, uh, LNG from the LPL favored against E-Star, then, um, Red Force favored against Afrika and then WE favored against RNG. Uh, that's the, the closest one, although it's still not that close. Um, right. I'm not going to try to walk myself into a double LCK lineup this this time around, um, but the pricing like really isn't all that helpful for us in terms of like trying to get two favorites. Obviously, so uh, I guess firstly, like which favorite do you think people are going after? I think it's really hard to say. Like tomorrow's slate feels really like a crapshoot, honestly, um, because the best teams are playing 
other best teams. Yeah. So, uh, like RNGWE is a really tough one to call, and uh, Damwon and Hanwha Life are, is, is a really tough series to call as well. Uh, leading LNG to seem like the, the safest favorite in terms of that they're going to win, um, but they don't necessarily always score the, uh, the, the best. So they're maybe the safest in terms of that they're actually going to win their series, but are they going to score the best is, uh, I think, kind of, kind of uh, up for discussion. Um, you know, I, it's really hard. Like, tomorrow, kind of, tomorrow almost feels like a day where double underdog might win. Hmm. Uh, just because I, I don't know if I'm like convinced that it's going to happen, but you know, RNG Hanwha life, they're, they're definitely live dogs. Um, they could both easily win with the way they've been playing. And then even Afrika, like we don't like Afrika, uh, when we talk about them, but I'm not, I haven't been like overly impressed by this red force team. So could Afrika win? Yeah, I think Afrika could win. Um, and even E-Star, like, would it yeah. shock either of us if E-Star beat LNG? Not really. So it almost feels like tomorrow is, like, has the potential to be a, a double dog type day. But that that's what's making it so uh, so tricky, I think, is um, you've got, you know, two two series, in each, one in each league with two of the top teams. Uh, and then, you know, just other favorites that aren't that trustworthy. Um, and underdogs that aren't great, but I don't know. So it's, yeah, it's a tricky slate for sure. So just trying to talk through like all the options, it, it feels like double underdog is certainly viable, but which underdogs will, will be the question. It's funny. Cause you were saying that you thought LNG was the safest favorite and I'm sitting here thinking, but man, if E-Star can win, like E-Star can score, like they, for sure. Um, like I think, I think winning GPP lineups are going to have just a, ridiculous amount of points tomorrow because um just like the teams on the slate can put up like huge scores if they if they sweep you know it's like obviously if if it's like all two one you know tight two ones it's different but like i feel like we've seen most of these teams at some point put up like big scores that um that we'll be able to get those tomorrow but yeah it's 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 weird it's tricky tomorrow too because like the lng uh LNG E-Star series, those two teams are, like, well in the bottom half of the league in kills per game. Uh, but they're also, you know, pretty low in deaths per game. Like, LNG are averaging less than 10 deaths per game. Um, so if E-Star win, are they going to – the fact that E-Star aren't really picking up a lot of kills and LNG don't give a lot up, even if E-Star win, are they going to score enough points? Um, I think we could both see it, like we mentioned. But – you know, that kind of gave me some pause when looking at this slate as well. And then it's uh, similar with, with Damwon, at least. You know, HLE ha are averaging the most kills in the LCK of, yeah. of any team. But Damwon are, like, middle of the pack for kills per game. And then they're giving up also – they're also giving up under 10, kill, 10 deaths, I should say, uh, per game. So is that series going to end up being super high scoring? I'm not sure. Um the two teams that are the most explosive are RNG and WE. RNG leads the LPL in kills per game, but then WE lead the LPL in overall kills. Right. Uh, so that's the one where it's like, is that going to be the most explosive series? Or is it just that they get a ton of kills because they haven't played as many good teams? Um, you know, that's that's what's throwing a lot of, like, trickery into tomorrow's slate is nothing is really straightforward at all. So it's really it's really a tough one in that regard, I think. <clears throat> so if you obviously building around two underdogs makes it you can play pretty much whatever you want um right salary wise yeah. um so who are you going to who do you think is the most do you think rng is the most likely underdog to win like i think what you said like they're they obviously lead the league in kills um like if they win that's a pretty decent uh decent leg up yeah I think they've definitely got um, a good chance to win. It wouldn't surprise us at all, but I think maybe with the way that Damwon have been playing, like they're not as dominant this year, mm -hmm. um, and they've obviously been really good outside of that freak loss uh, to Fred and Prion that we bring up a lot. But uh, <laughs> it just feels like Damwon aren't as dominant so far this year um, as we're used to them being after uh, winning Worlds last year. Yeah. 
And HLE, you know, even though I was sort of down on them coming into the year, it's hard to argue with how they've played because, uh, you know, they've beaten some good teams of late and they're scoring really well when they win. So I think if I was going to say one underdog, at least in those two series where it's top of the top of the table matchups, I think maybe I would lean HLE, but I, I just don't have any like really great concrete takes on this slate because I can see so many different things happening, honestly. And it, it hurts for like giving, <laughs> giving great answers to your questions and giving like, great advice on where to go for, for tomorrow's slate. But it's just, it's just honestly how I feel. Like I, I definitely could see Royal or RNG winning. I could see WE winning. I could see Hanwha winning. Like you look at all these teams and you could sort of talk your way into, into how any of them could win. Um, so it just makes everything really kind of difficult. tomorrow. Um, I think like, like I said, and, and then you factor in, like I already said too, like I think LNG are the, the safest favorite, but am I really like, do I think they're going to score the best if yeah. in a win? I don't think they end up scoring the best, but it's just easier to predict them the win than it is pretty much any of these other teams. Honestly, is that more to do with them or with E-Star? It's a little of both. I mean, I think LNG are, are pretty good. Um, they've looked pretty good so far this year. And then E-Star haven't looked that, that good. Uh, of course, they're not playing as well. Um, and then when you look at the individual matchups, I just think LNG have um, some some nice spots where they have a potential gap over uh, over E Star. Especially, I think that jungle matchup is just a huge one that uh, E Star are going to have to overcome. Because you know, I think Tarzan, like we've mentioned a few times, he was always regarded as one of the best junglers in the world, and he's played really well and is. His 2v2 synergy with uh, Icon has been really good so far this year. And I just think that Tarzan, Tarzan is a way better player than Hacker. Okay. Uh, so so that's why I, f- I just feel like LNG are the safest do- our safest favorite. But it, it's, you know, we're, you've got the chart up right now. You know, they're, they don't really get that many kills per game. Um, so it's like, yeah, you can take them and maybe you get a 2-0 or a 2-1 and they're pretty safe to win. But... Uh, you know, are they going to outscore uh, an RNG or a w- whoever wins RNG in WE or whoever wins Hanwha? I-, I think it's more likely that Hanwha Life would outscore them in a win than Damwon would outscore them in a win, though, because Damwon really aren't picking up a lot of kills this year either and, and dominating like we're used to them yeah. doing. But I-, I think the highest upside, I mean, it's hard to say because they're both two great teams, so maybe it doesn't play out this way, but it feels like the team – with the most upside is whoever wins that RNG WE series. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. It's funny that <clears throat> we basically go back and forth between those three. That Afrika Red Force game looks like it should, or series should just be ignored completely. Like, it yeah, doesn't but, even matter who wins because, like, there's just not enough kills in that one. Right, but as we've learned, you know, multiple times, the game that we say should is the one that should be ignored is the one that ends up being the one that scores the most points. So, yeah, but I'm with you. Like, neither neither of those teams is very exciting, right? Like, no. that's why we haven't really even talked about them at all because, right. you know, they're, they're not exciting, and you can see it in the stats on the screen here. Like, they're not – they don't pick up a lot of kills per game. They give away a decent amount of deaths per game. But uh, is either one going to gonna dominate and, you know, score 20-plus kills in a win? I, it doesn't feel like it, but – We've seen it happen in, in series that are like this where they seem like they're the least exciting on the slate and then all of a sudden they're the they're the team. Whoever wins is the team you needed to take down a GPP. So <clears throat> can't rule it out, but I I mean, I don't like either side to really put up a ton of points. <laughs> yeah, I'd say based on how negative we are on them, it's going to be like a 2-1. It'll be like 23-18, 21-17, and 20-18. Probably, yeah. But if if that happens, then I'm losing tomorrow because there's no way I'm buying into either of those sides. Like, yeah. Like I don't I, want either. Like I just, no, I I basically am looking at it as a three game slate. Yeah, it just doesn't feel like the upside is there with either team, even in a win. But right, who knows, man? Like I I wouldn't be excited about playing either side of that. But it's just, I think what makes it tricky with that one too is like the upside doesn't feel like it's going to be there, and it also like either side could win yeah we're not really pinpointing we're not really feeling that confident about 
either side winning. So I think that factors into why why that ex- why we haven't really felt great about that series one way or the other. Yeah, I'd say uh, kill prop wise, it's like by far the lowest. Like uh, they have Red yeah. Force win odds are higher than WE's, but WE has uh, a fourteen and or excuse me. They do it by game. So, like, basically map one, 14 and a half kills versus 12 and a half for, for Red Force. And that's in a win. Like, you can almost, they're almost, almost expecting as many kills from RNG in a loss than they are from Red Force in a win. So, like, yeah. it's a, it's goofy in that way. But, yep. I, um, it just, yeah, that, that RNG WE series, that, the winner's got to, got to be the highest point score on the slate, I would think. Um, because I think both those teams are explosive. And, like, even if Hanwha Life, end up winning tomorrow um with as great as they've been playing in the, the amount of kills that they've been getting in these series are they going to be able to bully damwon for 20 kills a game right. i i'm not positive on that one either so that's why i really think whoever wins that rng w we series probably is the highest scoring team on the slate but which way are you going to go <laughs> that's the tricky part i mean we were even joking that uh when fred brian beat uh damwon uh the only like piece that you needed was the team slot. Like you didn't even need their, all of the other players because they just didn't score enough anyway. So like, right. and I think that's more about uh Damwon than it is against Fred at Breon. Um, like to sweep and like only have the team spot be valuable was, is kind of interesting. Right. Um, so you talked uh, on the video yesterday about how we see some more um, double junglers. Um, I didn't actually end up seeing what, Oh, the Teddy captain won today, of course. But so that obviously didn't happen today, although when I checked early, there was a, a double jungler um, before the T1 uh, series ended. The, a jungler captain, I forget who it even was, uh, was leading all the GPPs. So do you think this feels like a double jungle slate? Yeah, I think this is a viable one for that. If you want to go with two of the big favorites in Fiddle uh, you know, guys like there's a lot of guys, honestly, on this slate that, that play carries and are we're used to seeing putting up pretty good point totals like we talked about tarzan already being a great jungler uh he's a guy that could do it uh you know canyon on damwon has played carries in the past and been great on them arthur can play him for hanwha life uh and then of course Beisheng is arguably the best jungler on this entire slate <laughs> right. uh, well maybe that's a little bold seeing as canyon was the mvp in the world finals last year but um there's a lot of really good junglers on this slate. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's definitely a viable way to go. And it it still does seem like, for the most part, that junglers are still out producing mid laners. So, yeah, um, yeah I, I think that's definitely a viable way to go. And there's definitely some junglers to choose from that can really put up a lot of points. Um, I didn't even I didn't even mention uh, Wei. And, you know, he's, a, he's another guy who can pull out these carries and, uh, you know, dominate dominated game so you know there's a ton of good junglers on this slate honestly yeah i'm still coming to grips with it that like i just if if i can build a double uh ad carry lineup like that's what i'm going with it's just like it struggles i think that's the way to go still um so i do think that is still the way to go because these ad carries are just getting the huge majority of the kill share on these teams so far this year um but yeah, it's, it just if it, if it comes down to double jungle versus double mid, I think I'm leaning double jungle right now, uh, even though it's not reflected in the salaries at this point. But yeah, definitely double eighty carry is uh has got to be the way to go. Still, I mean they're just picking up so many, so many kills in these series. It's, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. It's pretty much every series the the eighty carry is ending up with the most on the team, which of course isn't unheard of in years past. But it's just really sticking out a lot this year. It feels like. Yeah, what's, yeah uh, what gets me, somebody me. brought it up in the Discord the other day. They, um, I think they said it was something about leaving a lot of salary on the table. And I was saying, that, like, I don't, I think we actually talked about this in a previous video, but, like, I don't, the only salary I, I consider is, like, does this lineup, is it 50000 or less? Or is it more than 50000 And, like, if I have a lineup that's, like, 46-5, but, like, I like the underdog and I like the lineup, like, I'm not going to be like, oh, I need to, I need to figure out a way to spend up. Like it's just, uh, it just seems so so unnecessary to do that. I feel like the only the only benefit of doing it of not leaving the money is like, or the only path of not leaving money is like just pay up at a team slot of one of the team you don't have. Like do something like that. 
lets you differentiate a little bit and use the salary. But like leaving salary on the table is just, it's fine. Like, I think it's just perfectly fine. Yeah, it definitely is. And it's something I've had to like overcome because it's, it's just like a weird mental thing when you look and you have like 5k in salary left or whatever, because you know, like in other DFS sports, like, uh, if we're playing soccer or something and we have like 5k left, it's, it'd be unheard of. Right. Yeah. You're like, I did something wrong. That never happens in soccer unless you got like Kevin De Bruyne on a late slate and you got to replace him with, uh, like Ilkay Gunduan or something like that. And that's the only way, like if you had to make some sort of weird late swap, like you wouldn't really intentionally leave 5k on the table in any other DFS sport. So it's just like a weird mental block thing sometimes that I've had to overcome in the past. Like, you look and you see you've got all this money. It's like I should spend it somewhere, but in League of Legends, it's really not always the most viable thing to to do. So, yeah, um, it's, it's a I'm good point. Looking at um, like cumulative salaries here. So if you play this double underdog, obviously double underdog, you're gonna have money left over. Yeah. Um, an RNG E Star combo. Uh, the most expensive combination you can get is forty five thousand. So yeah. There's your five thousand left on the table. Yep. Exactly. But who knows? Could be there. Yeah, definitely could be. Could be. I mean, it's tomorrow's is going to be a tough one, honestly, just from a standpoint of getting these results right. So it's yeah. going to be tricky, but it, it should make for more lineup builds and, and different ways to go. So for sure, you know, it should be good. And there's some good series to watch tomorrow. So that's always a good thing as well. Always helpful. Always helpful. <laughs> Uh, All right. If you guys have enjoyed the video, if you could just please hit the like button below. Uh, As always, you can subscribe to get all the Rotowire videos. Um, In addition to League of Legends, we've got NBA, NHL. Uh, We've got one more football one left, although it'll be next week for the Super Bowl, obviously. Baseball starting up, so we've got plenty of video content there. Um, We also kind of mentioned the uh, subscriber Discord earlier. If you'd like to join in there, just go to rotowire.com slash chat. That chat is for subscribers only, so if you are not a subscriber and want to get in uh, and try us out, just go to rotowire.com slash pod, that's P-O-D, for 10 free days to the site. You get access to every sport that we offer uh, and the uh, Discord. Uh, no credit card required, so it's really just uh, easy as that. So, Ethan, thank you for that, and good luck on Friday. All right, thanks. Same to you, man.